Yes, of course they proceed in secret. We are told that we are engaged in advancing conspiracy theory when we talk about a basic sociological reality in our society. The time has come for people to demand truth, to look into the eyes of fear and say, no, I don't believe this. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? Hi, welcome to Spiral Into It. I'm Fisk Smith. In this episode, we are going to show interviews with speakers who presented at the 9-11 Inquiry in San Francisco at the Herbst Theater on March 26th through March 28th, 2004. September 11th, 2001 is the most important date in our country's history because it is becoming increasingly clear that the official story of what happened on that date is far from the truth. In this series of shows, we intend to demonstrate, through the voices of the 9-11 presenters, how so many unrelated events are related, and the bigger picture is something much more sinister than most Americans will be able to handle. The first World Trade Center bombing, the bombings in Oklahoma City, and the events of 9-11 are all related. These events have effectively conditioned Americans to believe that government and more of its oppressive legislation is the only way to protect them from more terrorism. In the coming years, our oil industry policies will begin to reveal widespread destruction. These short-range, greedy, irresponsible policies will begin to unfold generations of famine, refugee migration, weather irregularities, economic disruptions, resource and gene wars on an unsuspecting public confused by the real issues. The powers that be know it is imperative to have broad-ranging legislative mechanisms in place to deal with these catastrophic events and to control its citizens and the anarchy that will follow. 9-11 was the linchpin of this public conditioning. So many questions about that day have not been addressed. The 9-11 Commission, the media, and all the branches of government are complicit in keeping this out of the public debate. Fighting terrorism has nothing to do with sustaining freedom. It has everything to do with creating more wealth for military corporations and Wall Street. It has everything to do with curtailing your freedom and conditioning the truth out of everybody on this planet. The time has come for people to demand truth to look into the eyes of fear and say, no, I don't believe this. Take back common sense instead of fostering a world of us against them. We are them and they are us. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? I worked for many years with the British philosopher Bertrand Russell. When I first was uh, in Great Britain in the late 50s, I was active in the then campaign for nuclear disarmament and was in its youth executive and first approached Russell who was the titular head of the campaign for nuclear disarmament about the question of a strategy for resisting what we perceived at the time to be the imminent prospect of nuclear annihilation which led to the formation of something called the Committee of 100 in Great Britain that organized a massive disobedience nonviolent civil disobedience, uh, in large part based upon rank and file trade unionists, the mine workers in Wales, the Scottish uh, steel apprentices, the firemen's union, and so on, against the prospect of nuclear war and the presence of U.S. bases uh, in, in Great Britain. And then later with the formation of the Bertrand Russell Peace Foundation, amongst our many activities, we undertook something called the International Tribunal on U.S. War Crimes in Indochina, which looked at the um, appalling record of genocidal onslaught on the population in Southeast Asia in pursuit of control over the natural resources uh, of the region. Uh, Jean-Paul Sartre had been the 
uh, executive president of the tribunal, Russell, its uh, honorary president. And we had a large number of investigative teams and had rather prominent hearings uh, in London and in um, Stockholm and Copenhagen and Tokyo and so on. I think in some ways a, um, an antecedent model for what I should think ought to occur with respect to the uh, responsibility of the U.S. authorities for the events of 9-11 and this terrorizing of the people of the United States and of the world with these state-sponsored events. I like to put this in the context of a crisis of capitalism, a crisis of imperialism in, in essence. I think it's essential that we keep in mind that we have an extraordinarily concentrated power in this country. Uh, the official statistics essentially show that about 1% of the population owns 90% of the national wealth. We have, what, 5% of the world's population within our national frontiers? And yet this tiny little oligarchy has control over something like 70% of the natural resources of the planet by any criterion. Uh, that's an empire. And it's an economy that's been in crisis and really since the First World War I should say that the capitalist economy has been in permanent crisis. It's, resol it's, it's resolved its crisis periodically by a uh, pump priming mechanism dependent upon arms production. It's an addiction to arms production in, in ever increasing doses. Consequently, capitalism is driven to adventure overseas constantly, and that can't be accomplished without terrorizing the population into a kind of numbed acquiescence. People tend to think that the use of lies and pretexts for the initiation of long-standing plans for war is something unique or new, when in fact it's, I think, true to say that it's been characteristic of the sort of social and economic order that we have here from its the inception.